So how are you guys doing today? Is this the middle of your day, beginning of the day? Uh, day? We got a I'm long third of the day. way through. Yeah. No, we got, we got the premiere tonight. We nice, got the whole nice. premiere. LA you're, premiere. You're really gearing the up after for party. it. after party. Yeah. Well, congratulations on this on this gorgeous film, this gorgeous story. It's just such an important film, I think, and, and I, I I just love that this this film is out there for people that, that might need it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so awesome. I'm wondering uh, if you, Joel, remember the, the moment you realized that this was going to be the story that was going to get you back behind the camera. I, I knew that I wanted to be involved when I got deep into the memoir. It, it literally was the moment where Garrett's mother and, and he are kind of getting out, breaking out in a way. And, and the reason I felt that is because I didn't know whether it'd be worth making a movie that was just about a torture facility with no hope. Mm -hmm. Why I thought it was worth putting on the screen is because you know, I'm fascinated with humans making mistakes and being willing to re-examine those choices. And, and the fact that Garrod's mother had such a turnaround at, at a similar moment as he was discovering his own agency, mm -hmm. I was like, there's two pieces of hope here, is that young people know how to forge their own path despite the obstacles, and that uh, grown up people, you can teach an old dog new tricks. And I thought there's a hopefulness in that and it's worth telling his story. Uh, yeah. For you, I, I, I have to assume that, that writing the memoir in the first place might have been like reliving these experiences, reliving yeah. this life all over again. Yeah. I'm wondering if seeing this movie get made and then seeing the finished product sort of felt like reliving that for a second time. Yeah, the first time it was incredibly difficult to reconstruct the type of mindset that I had during that time because I'm so, you know, far left of where I was back then. Um, but uh, it was incredibly important to get it right. And so when Joel w really wanted to get the movie right in terms of tone, um, I was thrilled about that. But I wasn't expecting to watch from the outside my own story because it, it felt mm -hmm. like I suddenly had more compassion for myself because I could see that, especially with Lucas's wonderful performance, you can see how he didn't do anything wrong. You know, he, he had almost no choice but to say, yes to go to conversion therapy and so it was a bit cathartic to do that and to not have the the safety in some ways of of my voice carrying us along mm -hmm. um and then yeah it's it's just been it's a strange thing to watch it I can but, imagine. but it, it is cathartic I totally so. i totally empathize with yeah. if someone said to me they're gonna turn my life yeah. into a film i'd be like I already lived that. He's blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I get an audition? Yeah. <laughs> on, only if Russell Crowe can be my dad and Nicole can be <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, that's it. So it's interesting to me that this movie seems to have empathy for, for everyone. It's not just it's not just for Jack. It's for, it's for anyone that comes across the screen. The movie sort of delves a little bit into why they are the way they are. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. why that was important to come across for, for you both. I felt... I, I was shocked. There was one of the most startling things about the book was that it's dedicated to his parents. Mm -hmm. um, and in my great fear as a child was being sent away from my parents to an institution. That was one of the reasons I read the book so quick. I'd never ever imagined that the people would, that would send me away from my parents would be my parents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and that double fear kind of startled me. But, but Garrett then rendered them in the memoir as in real life. He understood why, that the choices to send him to conversion therapy. And the reason conversion therapy exists I perceived, preconceived that it would be a hateful practice created by hateful people, um, you know, paid for by hateful other people sending their kids Well, out. it was paid for by hateful people. Yeah, but I mean, the, 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 <laughs> that your parents yeah, sent you there out of love yeah. and, a, and, a, and a feeling like they were able to help you. Yeah, yeah. I thought that's so complicated and I would ne I'd never seen that, the detail and fiber of that decision as being like, a, a, a decision that they thought was positive. Yeah, I mean, in our crosshairs was never like the parents or necessarily the lower churches that were involved. I think the higher up the power goes, that's when I you see start screaming. Paid, like, mm -hmm. yeah, funded mm -hmm. by hateful people. Because we know we know who funded a lot of it. Yeah, um, yeah. But so you know, the higher up you go, that's that's who you attack. Mm. I don't think I think you try to understand and, and hold accountable the parents. I mean. In no way do you not hold these these two characters accountable for mm. what they did. Oh yeah, Nicole, you know, is, is very regretful. But I'm not so. creating a myth as to what as to is it, that it coming from a, a mustache twirling evil yeah. place. Mm -hmm. That's too easy. It's it's, that, it's, right, it's right. a very interesting evolution that I saw within this true story of, a, of particularly of a mother, who did something she thought she was doing out of love. She created um, mm. rather than help. She recognized the hurt, 
and the pain and was willing to, to re-examine that choice. Mm -hmm. And that to me was a hopeful enough place or a foundation to, to create a story. And a, a roadmap to other people if they mess up. Mm -hmm. Like, here's how you get out of this situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are several scenes where in in this film where the camera is is just is a static. It's not. It's it's holding on something that's uncomfortable to watch, but it it doesn't you know it doesn't cut away. It doesn't shy away. And I'm wondering why that was important uh, in the making of this film to to keep the camera just right on the the horrific act that's taking place. Well, I th I just have this instinct like if you're undergoing something that is horrific, there's no escape. Mm -hmm. That 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 in order for the audience to feel at least a, a distance observational portion of that discomfort that you have to put them in that place as well um, and the only reason I think the scene you're talking about is, is you know is, is, is probably the most hard to watch scene in the film abusive and it is the only reason there's edits in it is because I felt the need to make it even more brutal and, it, and make it longer but yeah uh, the need to hold on things that are uncomfortable I think audiences are able to deal with that knowing that they're at a distance you know, um, that's all just instinct stuff mm -hmm. as a filmmaker. And I love I love watching movies that, that are unflinching. And you know, I did that in my memoir too. I, I stayed in the moment mm -hmm. for long periods of time. I think that's, you know, we were sort of communicating that way too. Yeah. Amazing. So much of uh, Lucas's performance is, is an internal one. It's, mm -hmm. he's, he's, it's a very quiet performance. It's a very uh, just withdrawn performance in, on purpose, I assume. And I'm wondering how you, how you draw out the, the emotions you need the audience to understand when so much of it is happening beneath the surface. It's a real challenge because, you know, the, as Garrett has pointed out, the, the memoir is very internal. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, in, in a memoir, it could be very internal. Um, I, I, it was a real challenge for me and a learning experience even throughout shooting and then cutting the film about how to at least get inside those thoughts to a degree and, and particularly his relationship with belief um, willingness to undergo therapy, devotion to it, and the, the beginning of questioning that was going to snowball into his agency. And then allowing that silence and, and compression of his being put upon to be not a lovely explosion of self-power and, and, and outward kind of uh, agency. Um, you know, and it, it was a challenge calibrating that central characters that are kind of... Uh, you know, put upon and, and preach to and talk to a lot is tricky, but that's the beautiful thing about Lucas as an actor, he can hold that space. Mm -hmm. yeah.